Now there's a fascination today about getting the best picture you possibly can out of your retro devices. But what about if I told you that that fascination on the Sinclair Spectrum started way back in 1986? Right, here we are on the rickety old table, on the brown side of it though this time, which uh, will become clear why in a bit. But anyway, we are looking at this little device. This is the Adapt Electronics Spectrum RGB Output Module. Uh, fairly unimposing little box. Obviously, uh, Spectrum uh, Edge Connector on that side. It's also got a pass-through as well, which is always handy. Uh, this is the uh, output to the television or monitor. Now, um, I was a little worried trying to find the pinout for this because it is... Um, all the chips inside have been sanded down so you can't see what they are so trying to work out what the pinouts were a bit harder but turns out uh, from finding something online it is exactly the same pinout as the uh, Acorn BBC and Electron's uh, RGB output so I've got the cable set up already over there so that's handy um, this little light here shows you when it's receiving power and also if it's getting the signals correctly um, yeah some computers wouldn't have worked properly with this but there was a ways around it we'll get into that in a second uh, and these two tuning things if you don't get a perfect picture you can you can just twiddle with those and and tune it yeah it's got a very home built feel to it this feels like exactly like a, a product project box from from maplins uh, and even down to using the uh, flat headed screws in the base there so yeah um we might open it up later it's an interesting device um, design inside uh, it, just in the sense of how it's put together more than anything else, but yeah. Uh, this obviously makes use of the fact that the Spectrum, again there are caveats to this which we'll come to in a second, uh, outputs some of the raw video signals from uh, the, the video chip onto the interface card, and so it was able, it's able to build an RGB signal from those. It's, I wouldn't imagine, I imagine it's the same thing that the, the like the ZX HDMI modern ones use as well. Um, Although I know a couple of them require you to modify inside, but uh, yeah. Anyway, I keep saying yeah. Let's uh, it works on all spectrum. So let's go through that first before we go through some of the documentation. So there's uh, a very specific thing. So we've got a few different um, PCBs here uh, for the Sinclair Spectrum. So there's that one, and then there's this one, and there's what do I want? Maybe that's what I want. It doesn't matter anyway. Um, oh, in fact, that's not what that is the other one I want. Uh, so yeah, so it's these three, right? So here's the thing with this, and I'll, I'll try to zoom in so we can get a, a better view of what's going on. Right, even zoomed in, it's going to probably be a little tricky to see, but uh, you can hopefully just see here these kind of unconnected pads. So you'll see there's solder points, four solder points around V, and I think that's supposed to be U. Sorry about that anyway. But anyway, you can see that these things, now generally they should have a, a connection across. So these are the things that uh, we'll go through the instructions later and that's kind of mentioned. So the, some spectrums didn't have these filled in. Um, some did, so if we go to this one, and you can see those same points there, but they've got bridges across. So those ones are connected. And then further later ones didn't even have those at all. So going here, you can just kind of see, ooh, where are we? In that area, and indeed nowhere else on the board, we don't have those links anymore. Um, I do kind of, I wonder what the benefit of not having them connected was. Because obviously all the work laying out the board has been done because you can just connect those and then they will work. So I do wonder what the benefit of not having them connected was if, um, I mean, it was the amount they could save from... The, I mean, no, it, it makes no sense. They've got it there as an option, so it is interesting. Maybe it was saving money. Maybe it's something to do with... Certain, I don't know. Regardless, if you connect those, if you, you don't get... If you try to use one of these and you get just red output or maybe nothing at all or the sync light doesn't come on, then um, you can look inside and if those aren't linked, you can just solder some wire across the two lines and that will make it work so 
there is a bit of this about in the in the instructions which we'll look at in a second right now they're, they're keeping my place <laughs> this magazine right here in fact so should. this is the february 1986 edition of crash magazine anyone that means the spectrum and this time will know certainly uh and probably now because it's being remade in a smaller format by uh, retro fusion magazines so I have yeah marked it with the actual instructions for the advice so let's go to this page and there we go so yeah this is the um, the actual device kind of being advertised uh, I guess or at least um, announced for its release so um, you probably can't read it but basically it just says it's uh, just a, a device which allows a spectrum to connect to RGB or TTL analog monitors um, it cost 3695 when it was released um, Certainly for me, that was that was certainly going to be pricey. <laughs> I didn't even know it existed, admittedly, but yeah, a little bit pricey for me. Um, and yeah, so this bit, so some early spectrums will require free linking fitting, free free links fitted internally. Huh. That's um. Number two. I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll read the instructions later. The instructions will be the the source of truth for this. Um, oh, interestingly, just noticed. Um, the through port was actually two pounds extra, so this is the um, the deluxe edition, I guess. I wonder why Did they just charge extra for that because they could. Maybe it requires an extra chip or something to make work. I'm not sure. Uh, probably requires at least buffering. Yeah, maybe it probably requires at least some buffering chips in there. So probably that's where the expense was then. Uh, yeah. Also interestingly, um, so down here using exactly pretty much the same pun is another one which is designed for Ferguson monitors, uh, the MC01. Uh, I'm not sure if they're related in any way. I wouldn't mind getting hold of one of those as well just for the the interest. Oh, and MA20 as well. Uh, for a few pennies under £30 you'll get the RGB output together with sound and there's a green screen switch. Interesting. Quite interesting. <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting mag altogether. Actually, it's got some, um, it's got some slightly cool things in there. Uh, well, this is not a magazine review. Obviously, this is a very specific thing we're doing. But I'm going to break to uh, something that I found particularly interesting. I mean, it's not, it's not the most interesting thing ever, but it's kind of interesting to me. It just a, really a, it really staples it to its time. Uh, it, your chance to win a VCR in the Dural Saboteur mapping competition. Just kind of interesting, the idea of winning a VCR, which would have been a big thing at this point. Uh, yeah, anyway, let's have a look at the instructions. Apologies to headphone users for that snap. Hopefully I'll have worked that one out. Uh, yeah, so these are the instructions anyway. Uh, that might be a bit bright. I'll try to bring the, the contrast down. Uh, we'll zoom in a bit as well. Yeah, so here you go. This is um, obviously ensure spectrum switched off. Plug the, mod plug the module to the uh, expansion port. Um, connect the module to your color monitor. The module has a six pin door, so Apple connector, blah, blah, blah. That shows how it's um, wired up. Again, exactly the same as an Acorn, uh, uh, an Acorn machines, the BBC and the, and the Electron as well. Um, yeah, check the connector in there. So where are we? So it's this bit here. Uh, look at the top of the PCB, locate the position of the free, it is free, links marked U, V and Y. If no links are carefully sold up, Y and links at the place. So interesting, and again, a sign of the times where they're telling you to modify your computer. Um, so free links, that's, that's interesting. So we can see the, the U, right, focus. Right, we can see the U and the V, which we had before, but if we go a little bit further up beyond this keyboard connector, which I may have to adjust, there we go, and there we go, underneath that chip, the actual uh, display chip, we can see there's actually a Y there as well. So okay, yeah, so three links, there we go. And I presume if we find the one that had the links, but... Yep, so on that um, one, if we just find where that is, there we are. 
There we go. So that obviously the Y is also linked there. Yeah, interesting. Anyway, <laughs> what we should really do is stick this in the back of a uh, Spectrum and try it out. Now I will be using any of those boards I've just shown you there. They're all being fixed or being taken bits from, but most of them are being fixed. Uh, we're going to use a, uh, a Spectrum Plus, which is in far better working order. <laughs> Specifically, this one. Uh, so yeah, the it just kind of fits in the back there. The through port is useful because it means we can use something to load up software. So that's good. Um, yeah. Well, anyway, let's go and connect this to a television and see what we get. Right. So as you can probably see at this slight angle. This is a ZX Spectrum Plus. Uh, in the back, we've got the RGB module with the BBC Micro, which you can probably just see over here. Uh, that's its cable going through to there. What you can't see is uh, a future was uh, is 8-bit um, Div MMC. And also this little block box here, which came in the same auction that I got the RGB output. It's an on-off button for the Spectrum. <laughs> the power lead goes in the back and it goes into there and you just turn it on and off. And if you push it slightly, it resets, which is... Uh, quite interesting uh, right so what we're going to do is um, you should be getting a feed now from my recording device as long as it is actually recording it was having problems with this signal uh, and we will load up again using the div MMMC, MMMC. R at the top which is handy because my favorite spectrum game is in there so there we go so this is Rex. Um, hopefully the clarity is coming across. Uh, it's certainly at least as good as the um, the options you had on, say, the uh, one to eight K machines onwards. It's just interesting that it was available for these uh, for the forty eight K machines as well. I won't play much in this game. I get stuck into it far too much. Just enough to show that that's, uh, it's not really, really clear. Now we could show a comparison with um, composite, but there's not really much point. <laughs> um, we'd have to composite mod this. Uh... This plus, which I don't want to do. This is one I'm going to keep as, um, as uh, fresh as possible. Oh, got shot. Anyway, <laughs> um, and certainly there's no point to compare it to RF. It's anyone that's used RF could see that it's far better than that. Um, we do have some footage. I have played Rex using my 1 to 8K uh, Toast Rack, um, and that is uh, on the channel. So you can have a look, you can compare it like that. Uh, maybe I'll try and splice some, I don't know if I'll splice a version, I might do, but anyway. <laughs> that's the Adaptive Electronics RGB output module. It's pretty good. Um, let's go to a summary. And there we have it. <laughs> the uh, Adaptive Electronics RGB module for the Sinclair Spectrum. It's a nice picture. It's interesting that those devices were available back then. I mean, it makes sense they were. Um, interesting also that the Spectrum had the ability to put those signals through the interface uh, edge connector but didn't originally have it connected i would like to know the reasoning behind that i'm sure there's a pretty good cost reason i was going to assume it's a cost reason um but yeah it's a lovely little device and uh, i'm really happy to get one i'm hoping to, i'll try and find one of the other ones as well because it'd be nice to do a comparison between those that would make more sense than the uh, rf and composite comparisons um so yeah that would be interesting anyway <laughs> Thanks for watching. If you like the video, please hit like. If you really like the video, please hit subscribe. If you didn't like the video or you have something else to say, then please leave it in the comments below. And do comment because we have to make sure YouTube realizes it's not just fake uh, prank videos and people flexing about their money on their site, that there are other things as well. See you next time. The present is horrible. The future looks bleak. Remember our childhood. To get us through the week We're getting re-end